So this bag contains a robot. So this has been given to me by icstation.com to build and evaluate. And uh, it looks quite similar to a lot of kits of this type, other than this one also has a, a Bluetooth module. Um, so I'm not sure what you can do with the Bluetooth module. Uh, I mean, obviously it's intended to interconnect with a with a phone in some way, but I don't know whether it's for remote control or, or whatever. Uh, so we've got a nice printed circuit board here, which is the main structural component of the trundle or robot. There's a battery box, a couple of motors, uh, some small wheels and tires, some gears, and then some assorted components. So some LEDs, uh, this chip here, 15W201S. I have to look that up. Um, so let's get started. Let's put the components in and build this thing up. Oh, we do we do have a circuit diagram which is good. All right the chip chip here is marked LM339 which is a, uh, a comparator. Is it a dual comparator or a, I think it might be a dual comparator. So this is what's going to be used for sensing when to change direction. So I know so this here, I've seen this kind of thing supplied with the robots before. So this is a, a black line that the that the trundle can follow. So the idea is that the light sensors can sense the the black and the white and so it can steer backs and forwards and stay attached to the to the black line. So so that that's what that's for. So let's put it together. So I've completed the top side of the board now. So there's a load of through hole components which I've now fitted. So we've got a couple of power resistors here, some red LEDs. Those can't, couldn't quite sit down tight on the board because the uh, there's a little kind of notch in the lead leg which um, is on the positive side I think and it doesn't fit down through the hole but it's okay they're standing up there a little bit and that's fine. Um, there was a socket for the for the microcontroller for the STC microcontroller but I didn't use it I just thought I'd solder it in directly because I'm not going to take it back out again. Um, we've got some smaller leads here three millimeter leads green ones which do go into the board correctly and some variable resistors i think those are for setup but we'll we'll see there was a problem with the um the switch there's a momentary switch goes here but this one is really kind of rusty and i don't know it's been stored somewhere nasty and it doesn't actually click so I'm going to have to see if I can do without that because I don't have a replacement for it. Um, the other problem that I see is this battery box. So there's a battery box provided here, which is clearly for a double A cell. Um, but the circuit diagram shows that it needs three volts to run. So you need something like the 18650, which is a 3.7 volt cell. So clearly I need a bigger battery box than that. Um, I think I, I might have a battery box for an 18650 somewhere, so so I might use that instead. Um, so if we flip the board over, you can see there's still some, some work to do here. I've mounted these motors. The motors you screw in here with these screws that are supplied. There's an area here for the for the wheel axles and I've put I've put together the axle so it's got a couple of little kind of mounting uh, things here I haven't quite figured this out yet but you can see that the the uh, the cog goes down through the hole there 
so there's a cutout for the cog and then this little worm gear goes over the motor to to drive that that cog um, so I'll do that in a minute I think that the mounting involves these little yellow spacers and the self-tapping screws but we'll we'll see there's also some surface mount components so if you look here it requires a little surface mount capacitor and I've got a couple of capacitors here with in the kit and also there are these two chips here so I think these are the actually I'm not sure which is which but there's there's two types of chip here we've got the the smaller one two of those and then this one here which might be the LM339 the, the comparator chip uh, so I still need to um, actually that looks a bit looks a bit daggy doesn't it I look at that so the it's got solder all over the leg so this is this is already been used this chip uh, so that goes in this space here so I'm gonna have to do a bit of surface mount soldering and then at the top here there's still some some photodiodes missing so like on the top here we've got a pair of white lead and photodiode I think the same on the bottom so we have these facing down so when the robot is looking down it's reflecting light off the ground back into the photodiode diode so that's part, you know part of the steering mechanism and like some of these other trundles that I've seen before um, they don't have a front wheel but instead have this kind of screw and nut sticking down so it rests on the um, on the round end of the nut instead of having like a like a front wheel on the trundle so I'll just solder on these other surface mount components and try and mount the rest of the hardware so now the surface mount components are in place and um, so this is the LM339 the comparator multi comparator uh, this large chip here and the smaller chips um, let's see smaller chips are L9110 which is not a chip I've come across before but it's it's obviously some kind of motor driver because these are controlling the um, controlling the current to the motors so uh, that's in place just need to finish off a few things now put the photodiodes and leds here uh, and of course fit the wheel hardware I've got a couple of small problems I wasn't able to find a holder for one of these 18650s so I've uh, I've got one that was recovered from a laptop battery so I've soldered this on directly that will have to do for for the moment um, the other thing was I made a mistake here um, if I rotate the wheel here you can see there's some teeth missing there unfortunately I touched the soldering iron on on this gear so I've lost some teeth uh, so I might have to try and repair that with some super glue or something because otherwise it's going to be jamming when it gets around to that part but we can give it a go now see what happens it should follow the track let's see whoa it's gone straight on there we've got a jammed wheel yeah so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try and fix that cog because otherwise it's gonna keep getting stuck Let's see if it goes the other way Yeah, so see that's jammed up again. 
let me see if I can uh, if I can fix that. As luck would have it, I got a bag of cogs and stuff here, so um, I found one that is very similar in size. Uh, it's got an extra cog on the on the middle, but other than that, it's pretty similar. Um, but it doesn't fit the shaft very well, so I'm going to have to put a bit of super glue in there, I think, to stick it to the shaft. But otherwise, I think that's that's going to work. So let's give this give this a go. Do the line follower. There we go. That's not bad, is it? Yeah, so that's okay, isn't it? So it's hunting for the black line, or or seeing the difference between the white and the and the black using the uh, the photo diode underneath so that's the the first thing that we can do with this and um, that replacement cog of mine seems to work quite nicely now there are two other modes uh, so the so the three modes are uh, number one line follower number two it can do avoidance object avoidance and number three it can be controlled via the bluetooth stick here the bluetooth modem so this the second one the object avoider uses these uh, pho photodiode lead pairs on the front so whenever it sees a, a reflection of the um, the lead in the photodiode it knows that there's an object in the way and it can use that to turn away so so we'll have a go at that next now the way you switch between the modes is you hold down this button i managed to find a, a replacement button for that rusty broken one so so that's good so we hold down the button and we switch on and what should happen is that the lead comes on that's line follower this is um, object avoidance and to the when the two LEDs come on that means it's the um, the Bluetooth control so I'll just show that again so we've got line follower object avoidance Bluetooth control like that so it cycles around those different modes so if we release in that second mode, it's now in the object avoider mode. That didn't seem to work. Let's try again. Mode one, mode two, and I release. So if we have a look at the wheels underneath, if I block the LEDs, maybe that's not enough, let's try that. Oh there we go, we need something, need something darker. There we go, so one wheel started going back in the other direction now. And likewise, if I block this one, one of the wheels starts reversing. So it has the ability to turn away from things in the way. I will put it down in my little test track here. So there you go, that's using the optical uh, detector at the front there. So it's got an infrared LED and it's reflecting infrared light off things in front and the um, the photo di diode or photo LED is picking up the reflections. That seems to have got a bit stuck there doesn't it? It's got stuck in that. Oh no, it's going. So it's it's not super sophisticated but it's got some you know kind of basic obstacle avoidance functionality in it.
Okay, so let's do a demo of this Bluetooth mode. You'll have to excuse the slooshing sounds coming out of the dishwasher. So, we'll take, I've got the phone here which has got uh, an app on it. I'm not sure if there's a recommended app, I couldn't really figure that out from the IC Station web pages, but I'm using this thing called uh, Bluetooth Control. You can see that there. I'll put a link in the description. Um, so this is a customizable app uh, that can connect to a variety of different Bluetooth things. Looks like this basically. So I'm going to be using this to control it. I've uh, configured four buttons here to do right, left, backwards and forwards. So the first step is to get it into Bluetooth mode. So if you remember we we hold down the button, we switch it on, and we see mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, indicated by the LEDs. So that should now be in the proper Bluetooth mode. So I'll start my app. It's connecting now. Supposed to be connecting. Hasn't done much. Let me try, let me restart the app. Here we go. Okay, so it started turning now under the control of the app. So if I say forward and back. Forward, I can do right. Back, forward, right. I uh, haven't figured out what the correct sequence for stop is. I tried quite a lot of things but I couldn't find a stop. So um, I'm afraid once it's started it keeps on going round and round. So that's it basically. That's all it does. So I, mean, it's, I wouldn't say that's super useful, but you can see that there's potential for um, making a more intelligent robot out of this thing. So that's the Bluetooth remote control, smart car, intelligent robot obstacle avoidance and so on, $13.99, icstation.com. Uh, not bad, not, not a difficult kit to make and um, remember if you make it yourself don't burn the wheel with a soldering iron because you might not have a spare.